What are the tiny specks of stuff inside every living thing that we call cells? How are they discovered and what is the theory surrounding them? Well, that's what this video is about. So what we first need to understand is that every living thing has cells. For example, I have cells since I'm a human and these plants, they are living things, but they are called plants. So they have plant cells since they're not a part of the animal kingdom, unlike the rest of us humans which have animal cells. As I said in that little intro there, everything is made of cells. Yes, even the guy jogging along the pier on a Sunday morning with an iPod shuffle blasting, never gonna give you up, and he's so goddamn annoying. Which brings me to my first topic, cell theory. Cell theory is a three-part theory written and edited by many European scientists from the 17th to the 20th century. Dutch boy Anton van Leeuwenhoek first discovered the original cell while looking under a cell-created microscope. In the 1660s. In 1665, Robert Hooke took those tiny pores observed in living organisms and named them cells from the Latin word for a small room in which monks lived in or the cubicle of a beehive. But Hooke didn't know the structures of the cells yet. In 1839, Theodore Schwann took upon the observations of an animal cell and Matthias Schlieden worked on plant cells. And the two German scientists came together to make the cell theory along with Rudolf Virchow who people barely credit for the theory anymore. Sad, right? Well, these three scientists stated that all living organisms are composed of one or more cells, the cell is the basic unit of structure and organization in organisms, and cells arise from pre-existing cells. We can already tell that cells are pretty cool little guys, if they make up all living things, plant and animal alike, but what actually is inside of a cell? Well, now let's look into organelles inside a cell. Mitochondria provides energy for the cell. Think of the mitochondria as a power plant or a solar panel collecting energy for New York City. The vacuole stores nutrients and waste from the cell, kind of like Manhattan storage, even though the vacuole actually has good storage. The cytoplasm is a jelly-like fluid that keeps all the organelles in place, like the streets and sidewalks that keep all the buildings in New York City aligned. And the lysosome breaks down and eliminates waste, like the people who help the landlady take out the garbage. The ribosome makes the proteins for the cell, kind of like the factories which produce the goods and merchandise for New York. The cell membrane protects the cell and controls what substances can enter or leave it, like the annoying toll booths that charge big money that your dad has to go through to get from New Jersey to New York State. And that comes from experience. The endoplasmic reticulum, or the ER for short, it's a maze of passageways which proteins are carried from one part of the cell to another, like the roads in which the cars and trucks carrying goods drive to New York City, but the ER actually has two parts to it. The smooth ER is in charge of making hormones and lipids, and the rough ER synthesizes proteins, so the function of the endoplasmic reticulum is actually multi-purposed. The Golgi apparatus, or the Golgi complex, or the Golgi body, which I call it, packages proteins to send down to the cell, like FedEx, which carries packages out of New York City. This organelle was named after Camilla Golgi, who discovered the features of this organelle at a meeting of the Medical Society of Pavia in 1898. And I don't know if I said that correctly or not, but I didn't really care. Now we arrive at the control center, the nucleus. The nucleus is the brain of the cell, it gives instructions which it carries on to the rest of the organelles. The nucleus is coated by the nuclear envelope, a double membrane shielding the DNA inside the nucleus from the cytoplasm. In the center of the nucleus lies the DNA, RNA, and the nucleolus, which is responsible for the assembly of our ribosomes. Think of the nucleus as the town hall, where the mayor and his deputy staff fill out paperwork all day and give out orders to the rest of New York City. Here's an example of how the organelles work together. The nucleus gives instructions for the ribosomes to make proteins, and then once the ribosomes create some proteins, they send it all the way through all the other organelles, so that in the end, the Golgi body can package it up, export it out of the vault, out of the vacuole and the cell membrane into the body. Isn't that cool that there's so much going on inside us right now? The organelles we talked about were organelles that make up an animal cell, but here's nevertheless a brief overview of the plant cell. In a plant cell, along with a cell membrane, there's also the cell wall, which gives the plant cell its rectangular shape and acts as a support beam. There's also the chloroplast, which converts sunlight into carbon dioxide to make glucose, which is how a plant does photosynthesis. There's also a larger vacuole, which is more centered to the nucleus, whereas the vacuole in an animal cell stays towards the cell membrane.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the cell, the cell's history and how the cell works and everything inside a cell. I hope you guys learned something from this video and if you enjoy my content, please leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications so that you'll never miss another upload. Peace out.